<laughs> okay, cool. Oof, that was intense. Hi, this is Matt from Modern Samurai. Uh, today I'd like to have a little chat about why I think that sometimes uh, chokes may be a safer option for uh, door supervisors than striking. So, first a little bit about me for those that don't know. Uh, I've worked in the security industry for many, many years. I was head doorman at um, quite a few uh, city centre nightclubs, I've um, done some close protection stuff, I've uh, run teams, managed teams, uh, been an operations manager uh, and I also deliver the training for the SIA and I've done that for um, a large number of years. I also hold multiple black belts, run a full-time martial arts gym um, and have been on the receiving end and the front line of uh, what we're talking about for more years than I care to remember. So, um, first and foremost, why did I stop? Well, uh, basically, I I retired for want of a better word. Now, the reason that I did that is because there was one particular incident. Um, there were lots over the years, but this particular incident was the straw that broke the camel's back. So, I'd been in a situation where I was head doorman of, uh, of this particular club in Bristol City Centre. Um, it was known to be quite a volatile kind of place, did a lot of dubstep, drum and bass, that kind of stuff, massive drug culture, large gang culture, um, you know, uh, quite a difficult venue to work at, okay? Um, and I was head doorman there, and one particular instance, um, a customer came to me and complained that um, some guy was trying to steal his girlfriend's purse. He pointed the guy out to me, I went to speak to the guy, um, the guy saw that I was talking with this gentleman and then basically threatened to stab this gentleman. Now at which point I grabbed hold of him and went to physically remove him, he started fighting back and started swinging for me. So I wrapped him up and I threw him out. Okay, he then walked off, disappeared around the corner. Uh, two minutes later he was back and this time he actually had a, um, a glass bottle with him, a broken glass bottle, which he then ran at me and tried to take my head off with it. I mean he came at me with full intent and he swung that thing. Now um, I don't pretend to say that it was any kind of you know, super skill on my part because it wasn't. I literally just reacted and flung my hands up. Um, I was lucky that I had a, quite a big coat on at the time. His intention was to take my head off. There's no two ways about that. The only reason he didn't is because um, I, I flinched and reacted, okay? Um, at that point then, I was lucky. It was Bristol City Centre, and for one of the first times in I don't know how long, there were actually police not that far away. So they started chasing him, and it turned into this bit of a, a ridiculous kind of thing because um, other police joined in, and it ended up with about seven or eight coppers that finally jumped on him and pinned him down. And they managed to restrain him. Now. They arrested him, they took him away. He was kicking and screaming all the way, mind, um, threatening dire consequences. And uh, anyway, a couple of days later, I had a phone call saying that they'd released him with a caution. It was his first offence and he was very sorry. That was their words. That's what apparently what he said. And that was when I realised that that was enough for me. Um, I, you know, I'd risked my safety, I'd risked my health, I'd risked my liberty, I'd risked my sanity. Um, you know, people think it's an easy role and it's not. And I'd risked all of that. And when it came time for somebody to look after me and basically deal with that to stop that kind of thing from happening, it wasn't there. All right? And so that for me, that was kind of like the, the last straw. There were others, but that was the last one. And that was the point where I said, right, when the badge runs out, I'm not going to renew again. Um, you know, for me, it was that step too far. Okay, but I still teach. Uh, as I've said, I still I still teach. I I, I I regularly deliver training for the guys coming through, and I deliver the physical intervention and all that goes with that. Now, the principles and the core of the physical intervention is good. Okay, if I didn't believe in it, I wouldn't do it. Okay, and the system that we use, I tend to think, is a good one, um, and the core principles are great. All right, we, we definitely want to start low level. We don't want to be, you know, jumping straight in the deep end unless we absolutely have to. Um, but those skills are limited. Now, herein lies the problem. Okay, so in December 2017, the SIA said that vascular restraint guidelines uh, basically meant that chokeholds, in their words, were now. 
All right, now they've been banned in the police and stuff for quite some time, what have you. But when you look at the word banned, um, uh, the law is kind of a little different in what it says you can and can't do, yeah? Um, reasonable proportionate and necessary, yeah? So is it necessary? Is it reasonable? Is it proportionate? So it doesn't say you can't, it just says you have to be able to justify it at a high level. Now, when you're a door supervisor, Okay, things are a little different because you really have to justify it. Okay, but first let's get round to what they are. So, firstly, there's two different types. Okay, a choke is your ear, I'm, all right, and then a strangle is blood. Same thing. I'm cutting off the blood supply. Okay, so when we cut the air off, obviously you can't breathe. When we cut the blood off, obviously it stops uh, anything going to the brain, and unconsciousness follows quite soon after followed by death. So we do have to be very, very aware of what the dangers are. Okay. Now, when we get on to the um, use of force experts, and there's lots and lots of people out there, and some of them have got very valuable information, I'm certainly not dismissing them at all, uh, but I'm aware of lots of people that walk around in suits, um, that, you know, they've got very good professional qualifications or very good academic qualifications, but they've never stood on a fucking door in their lives. They have never ever been in a position where they've had to defend themselves physically against people that really want to take their head off. You know, I'm not talking about a low-level drunk guy that's a bit belligerent that you can walk out of a bar. I'm talking about somebody that genuinely, really, if you don't physically stop them, they will hospitalise you at best. You know, kill you maybe at worst. All right, but if you don't deal with that, okay, if you don't stop it, it's going to happen, and that's what I mean. And so these kind of experts. They're a necessary requirement, but they irritate the hell out of me in a lot of ways because, you know, they're giving an opinion, not a fact, an opinion on what they believe real violence is actually like. Because if you've never faced it, been in front of it, had to deal with it, you know, if you've never been in those situations, how can you claim to be an expert? It's a bit like me saying, do you know what? I've been to school, I did an exam on swimming, although I've never got in a swimming pool, I'm now a fucking expert on swimming. It's nonsense, all right? and I do feel that strongly about it. But there are some really good guys out there, so I'm not dismissing everyone, okay? Now, for me personally, I don't claim to be an expert, but I do know, as I've worked on the doors for a long time, I do know that I've had to deal with conflict and violent people a lot. Now, this is where I think, personally, that it can be less dangerous than striking. If you impact something, you think about it, and you strike them, okay, if I've, if I've got a big guy in front of me, and I've, and I've got to deal with him and, the, and you know, he's not taking no for an answer, what have you, and it becomes physical, the safest way for me is for him to be asleep. Yes, yeah, for him to be unconscious. Now, I'm not suggesting that that's what I want to be doing because I don't, but if I absolutely have no other options, okay? Now, I need to control that guy. Now, if I strike him, if I try and beat him down with strikes, for me to create enough impact to stop that person, almost certainly there's going to be damage almost certainly going to be damaged, okay? So there's a good chance I'm going to break bones. There's a good chance I'm not just going to break his bones, but I'm going to break my bones. Look at the state of my hands. They're all battered and broken for that very reason, okay? So the moment that I impact on somebody, there's, there's damage on both sides. And I can't control that level of damage. Now with a choke or a strangle, I can, okay? After sort of years of training it and having an understanding of it, this is again the difference, yeah? If you've got a, a guy that hasn't really no concept of what they're doing and time distortion kicks in and, and fear kicks in and they just grab hold of somebody and they're hanging on for grim death, that's where it's dangerous. But if you know what you're doing, okay, controlling a person through a choke or a strangle is very, very safe. Okay, you're not taking them to unconsciousness, you're not taking them even close to unconsciousness, you're just using that to control the person. The moment that they stop fighting back, then you can release, go into other things. You know, we're not talking about knocking people out. We're talking about controlling very large, dangerous aggressors that wish you or somebody else harm. And if I'm a 10 stone guy, and that's an 18 stone flipping coked up rugby player that has got really high pain thresholds, that is gonna tolerate an awful lot of stuff being done to them, even if I could do it, then we've got a real problem on our hands. So it's safer for me, it's safer for the public, and it's safer for the individual that I'm having to deal with, because if I apply it correctly, there's no long-lasting damage, no. Okay, it's over. Once I let go of that, it's done. We have to understand that um, working as a door supervisor is 
very much walking a tightrope, yeah? You're in a position where you're expected to deal with violence and violent people, but you're not really um, being given or allowed the tools to do that correctly. And you're being judged far more than everybody else, yeah? If you, if you imagine um, uh, two football teams, two opposing teams, yes? And on the one team, they have to obey all of these rules. They are given a complete set of guidelines which they cannot deviate from at all. Now, that's the one team. Now, the other team, they can pretty much do what they like with very little repercussions for that, okay? And they know that you're, half, you know, you're hamstrung by the rules. Now, which team do you think is going to win? All right, and that's the kind of world that we're in at the moment. So um, then you've got to add on top of that for a door supervisor, they are held far more accountable. Yeah. Um, to my mind, the media is biased, the legal system is biased. You know, society as a whole tends to be biased. Yeah. There's lots and lots of examples. You've only got to spend half an hour just skimming through news items around door supervisors to find a long list of, you know, man assaults door supervisor suspended sentence. Man assaults door supervisor, a suspended sentence, man glasses door supervisor, so on and so forth. But then on the other side of the coin, you've got, you know, door supervisor pushes customer and suddenly ends up with no job, a criminal record, um, loses his livelihood. You know, it, to my mind, it is very, very biased. So, so we have to be very, very careful on that type rope because... You know, we understand we're just trying to earn a living. That's 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 what we're trying to do. You know, we're not going out purposely to hurt people, but we're also not going out there to purposely be hurt by other people. And that's really where the problem lies because we need to be able to defend ourselves. Yeah, I'm not talking about those those that small percentage that are, you know, perhaps in the job for the wrong reasons. And let's be fair, those people do exist. The kind of people that are um, that are in there for those reasons, we're going to ignore those for the moment. We understand they exist and we want to get rid of them. And that's, you know, one of the good things about the SIA is they have achieved that to a large degree. Okay, So we're not talking about those. So for your, your average working door supervisor, yeah, we have the, you know, we have the right to protect ourselves and we should continue to have that right to protect ourselves. And when we actually get right down to it, I personally believe that in the majority of the situations that if I have to take that level of force, for me, I think that a choke is actually far safer than um, using strikes to incapacitate your attacker, you know, or to defend somebody. And so for me, I, I just think it's that safer option. And, and again, I mean, as, as Jeff Thompson said, uh, well, I'm not sure whether it's his quote, but that's where I first heard it. Um, it is better to be judged by 12 than carried by six. Okay, so um, if you enjoyed this, then please, you know, subscribe, click the link, um, or check out our online site, so that's www.modernsamurai.online, lots more information on there, and uh, yeah, leave a comment, guys, um, I'd, I'd love to hear what you think about it, and um, see you on the next one.